एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एज यू वुड हैव ऑलरेडी गेस टुडे इज वीडियो इज अबाउट शूज वी विल लर्न ऑल अबाउट व्हाट काइंड ऑफ शूज देयर आर एंड व्हाट शूज शुड बी परफेक्ट फॉर यू इफ यूर ट्रेनिंग एवरी डे ऑन इंस्टाग्राम समन एंड द अदर कीप्स आस्किंग मी दिस क्वेश्चन व्हिच इज द राइट शू एंड द आंसर टू दैट इज देयर इज नो राइट शू इट डिपेंड्स ऑन how you train what you train and what shoe fits you best but to make your life a little easier and to make your decision process a little better uh, i would like to divide shoes into like three categories the first category is running shoe now this shoe is required for anyone who runs regularly and by running i mean more than 20 25 minutes of running has to be there so if you run 10 minutes on the treadmill a training shoe will suffice for most of your training needs but if you are a regular runner then you need running shoes so what exactly is a running shoe uh basically a running shoe is designed to give you cushioning or protection for a single direction which is running forward and that's why you would see most of the running shoe are little platformed and they have a you know a thicker sole and they meant to give you all the support in one direction and running shoes are again categorized into two which is an outdoor running and an indoor running an outdoor running shoe will have a little bit of gyrations or, or you know an uneven surface on the bottom because again it's supposed to give you the kind of traction which would be needed when you're running outdoors because outdoor conditions can very a lot uh, and uh, a non marking shoe will be a more ideal if you're running on the treadmill so um some of the running shoes that i have are these ones you can notice that the platform is a little thicker and this one's a non marking indoor running shoe and i have one which is kind of like an outdoor but since i'm not of a, much of a runner i don't have a lot of running shoes with me but again you can figure out that this has got a thicker sole and um all the resistance on the sole is meant to be in the single direction and i'll explain that to you later when we're discussing training shoes for inside again another one of my favorite running shoes is netfit and you can figure out that's got a thicker sole and on the bottom you can see it's not very plain because it's meant to be an all terrain shoe so you can also run outdoors on it and it'll give you a good grip on the base now let's see what a uh, difference in an indoor and outdoor running shoe is so if i look at this shoe which is an indoor running shoe you can see that it's unidirectional it has nice cushioning which is on one direction but you also see that the surface of the sole is kind of flat and this is an outdoor running shoe which has a gyrated surface on the lower side which means uh, if i'm using this for a trail run this is going to give me a better grip and if i'm using this shoe to run on the treadmill this will be a better idea uh, generally if you confuse and if you go to sh go shopping and you want to ask somebody whether a running shoe particularly is indoor or outdoor uh, if you go for non marking shoes like these uh, this is going to be indoor and the shoes which leave a mark they also called marking shoes which is going to be an outdoor running shoe so yeah i mean if i take these shoes out outdoor on a muddy surface this is going to leave a mark and this will not leave a mark so this one's for indoor and this one's for outdoor this one can also be used for tracks because depending on which track you're running on if it's a proper track then this can do well and if you're running on tarmac or any other surface this is a better option the next category of shoes is for training training shoes basically do not just support your motion in one direction they support lateral motion as well so you know when you suddenly change directions like you are doing an hiit program and you're running side to side a running shoe will actually not serve the purpose and you need a proper training shoe to to go ahead and train uh, so these are relatively thinner uh, in terms of sole and they give you a lot of lateral protection so here's another training shoe that i have and you can see that it has a lot of resistance on the lateral side that means these grips on the side make sure that when i'm doing lateral motion or when i'm jumping from one side to the other it gives me the grip i need on this side uh similarly i have other training shoes which kind of do the same thing in my case a shoe which supports me till the ankle serves better for me because that way my foot has a solid grip uh around the shoe completely and my my feet is not moving inside the shoe and that's why i choose a lot of trainers which are till the ankle length but these are my favorite um, by far you know ankle 
length shoes training shoes are my favorite training shoes and you can see that they don't have a thicker sole but they provide you a good cushioning in every direction these can be used for dancing they can be used for zumba they can be used for your weight training they can be used for your hiit and just a quick comparison between a training shoe and a running shoe if you look at the soles of these two shoe and usually the colored part which is like the black and pink in this case is the one which gives you a better grip uh, and you can clearly see that this one has a better grip all over because this is a multi-directional shoe which is meant to be you know used for jumping around and changing directions very quickly and this is a unidirectional shoe so it has a grip good grip in the front and the back and the rest of it is okay so that means if i am doing uh, you know lateral motion with this shoe it's not going to be as good as it's going to be with this one so if you're a runner uh, this is a good choice for you and if you are somebody who trains this is a better choice for you that's mostly it the last category of sneakers or shoes that you can find in the market are basically your casual sneakers which are used for walking again these do not support any kind of exercise or jumping so these are strictly for walking so if you are somebody who likes to not wear any other shoes but wear sneakers with your jeans and you want to walk around you're traveling these kind of shoes will be perfect for you these kinds can also go well um, in parties but none of these shoes really provide you the cushioning that you need for training or running so don't use these for running but otherwise mostly in you know when you're walking around these are perfect also if you're weight training and you're not running around and you're doing just your weights then i think training sh these casual shoes be can be okay for training that's mostly about how shoes are besides that there is a very common question that comes up and that is how frequently should you be buying your shoes and how frequently you should be changing your shoes when it comes to training shoes um ideally um, they can last you a season which means you can buy them once seven eight once in every seven eight months or a year um, again just check for your cushioning if it already feels very hard and it's taken the shape of your feet it's about time you say goodbye to your shoes uh, and in terms of running um, a good running shoe if you are a regular runner three to four every three to four months you should be changing your running shoes and if you're marking kilometers in it then approximately around 500 to 800 kilometers is where your shoe would work fine and after that the padding will be gone so you need to replace your shoes again it's not about how expensive the shoe is that you're going to go out and buy something that fits your friend very perfectly might not be a good fit for your shoe all brands have a different fit there are some brands which are good for people with broader feet and there are some brands which are good for people who have narrower feet like me so figure out what works best for you figure out your activity uh, type and then go for the shoe that you want the market is flooded with options and there are so many shoes to choose from and you definitely can get confused but make a list of things you want from your shoe and make a list of things you would want in a shoe then comes things like color and you know fancier stuff if it works out your basics fine and the budget fine then go for the fancier things and it's never like uh, there's no one size fit all shoe that's going to be perfect for everyone you have to find your own fit i hope this video helps you a little bit in making that decision if you like it give it a thumbs up do subscribe to us and if there are questions that you have do write to us on this email id and we shall see you next time